Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. Thank you, everybody, for joining me for this one. I hope you and yours are all doing well. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about aquarium phosphates. What the heck are phosphates? To be honest, at first, when I got into the hobby, I had no clue what a phosphate is. So phosphate, also known by, you know, scientific people like me, as PO4, you know, PO with a little four, is present in every aquarium, even though many aquarium owners aren't aware that it's even there. Now, if the aquarium is not properly maintained, the phosphate levels will continually rise and contribute to algae growth. So what's the problem with that? Well, I'm going to tell you, testing for phosphate and learning about the sources of phosphate in your aquarium, it's also going to help you combat these effects. And the effects of phosphate? Well, while phosphate does not directly harm your fish, even at really high levels, the algae blooms that result from elevated phosphate can ultimately cause problems for your aquarium inhabitants. Did I just say that? All right, anyway, green water can deplete the oxygen, which in turn can harm the fish. All right, here we go. Two fish swam into a concrete wall. One turns to the other one and says, damn. There was a massive fight today at the fish restaurant. One fish got battered. And the last one, why are fish smarter than people? You're never going to see a fish spend a fortune keeping humans in a glass box. I know what you're saying. Vinny, get to the point. Where do phosphates come from and why do we get high phosphates? Okay, well, phosphates naturally increases as the water's broken down within the aquarium. In addition to being internally produced, phosphate can enter the aquarium from external sources as well. Everything from fish food to the chemicals used to buffer the water or to the tap water itself it can contain significant amounts of phosphate. Now, phosphate and sources can include, now the first one's the big one, uneaten food, but it can also include plant decay, dying algae, fish feces, or, you know, fish poop, uh, dead fish, uh, carbon filter media, believe it or not, aquarium salts, pH buffers, KH buffers, and also, like you said before, your source water, your tap water. So how do you go about testing for these phosphates? What are the desired levels? Well, phosphate is present in both organic and inorganic forms. Now, test kits can only test for inorganic phosphate. So keep that in mind, that you're only testing a portion of the total phosphate in your aquarium. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I do now, though. When test results show a level of 1.0 ppm or higher, the conditions become favorable for algae growth. At 2 to 3 ppm, algae overgrowth is likely to occur. Ideal phosphate levels are 0 0.5 ppm or less, which is parts per millions. We all know that. Now, here's the reason we all came to this video. How do you reduce phosphates in your aquarium? All right, well, number one, I know I'm going to sound like a, you know, a pain in the ass. The best way to reduce phosphate in your aquarium is to never let it get high in the first place. If your phosphate is already too high, however, you can reduce it by taking the following steps. Boom. Dude, number one, water change. Large water changes will help bring the phosphate down quickly, but the fix will be a temporary if, un if underlying sources are still there. Now, continue to perform frequent large water changes to keep the phosphate levels manageable until all causes are fixed. However, be sure to test your tap water, as some cities have phosphate in the drinking water. If your tap water contains phosphate, you'll need to use filtered or distilled water 
with the buffer added in to use for water changes. Number two, another big one, tank cleaning. Scrape the inside of the glass, remove the rocks and other decorations and scrub them well. Let everything settle a bit, then give the substrate a good gravel back in it. Wait a few days to give things a chance to stabilize, then clean the filter media to remove the trapped algae. Now number two, sorry, number three, which is now one of my favorites, is a phosphate absorber. Phosphate absorbing media is very effective. It can be added to virtually any filter. But using chemicals should generally be your last resort. Now, there's also phosphate binders. Now, these are even more chemicals, which, like I said, should always be your last resort. Now, these are liquid chemicals available at your local fish store or online. They can be added to the water to cause phosphate to precipitate out of solution. Use these with caution and start, start with low doses as adding too much will turn the aquarium water white. And believe it or not, that can affect the health of your fish as well. All right, here's a little bonus. How do you keep your phosphates low? Well, I'm gonna give you my tips. Uh, when you've brought the phosphate levels down, make sure they stay low. Here's some ways to avoid soaring phosphate levels. Number one, we're all guilty of this. We power feed or we overfeed our fish. Let's feed sparingly. The primary source of phosphate in the aquarium is flake food. Cut back on the frequency and the amount of food. Just a pinch once a day is sufficient food for most adult fish. And remove any uneaten food promptly, which I know I'm, sometimes I'm a little guilty, I don't do that. Number two, change the food. Phosphate is used as a preservative in flake food. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I know that now. All brands are not created equal, so do your research and choose the brands that have the lower phosphate levels. Excellent. Number three is your water source. Test your water source. It's not unusual for tap water to contain one part per million of phosphate. If the level is high, you gotta seek an alternative source for your aquarium water. Number four, water changes. Once again, frequent water changes. Like it with anything, you'll solve so many problems with just doing your water changes. They're gonna help keep the phosphate levels from rising. The changes uh, 10, 15, 25% weekly using a low phosphate water source. Now you also have your tank maintenance. Uh, keeping the tank free of debris and algae will help avoid phosphate buildup. Um, your filter media. Carbon is a good filter media, but did you know it can add phosphate to the water? So choose carefully. Now, filter cleaning. Regularly cleaning the debris from the filter will help reduce the source of phosphate. Plus, like I mentioned before, there are water treatments. Buffers to condition the water, alter or stabilize the pH, add trace elements, or change the hardness. They often contain phosphate. Don't use them if they aren't absolutely needed. And I say that about all chemicals. Don't use them unless they're absolutely needed. If you must use them, research the product and choose the one that came, contains the least amount of phosphate. Do your research. So let's wrap this up with a nice little bow on top. So that's Vinny's Aquatics take on aquarium phosphate. What causes them, where they come from, how you can reduce them, how you can remove them. It's pretty much, I mean, I could have went into a little more detail, but this video would have droned on forever. So I hope you guys learned a little something. If Listen, if you have anything to say, if I'm wrong about something, please leave a comment down below. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time, and I can't wait to see you next time. I'm Finney's Aquatics. Woo!